Hey guys, I'm here at Universal Orlando Resort, here to give you all the tips you need to know about Universal Interactive Ones here at Universal Studios and Universal's Islands of Adventure. So let's get started. Now the first thing you want to know is before you even get to the park, look for your wand online. A lot of the time, people come to the parks and they get their wands and they get drunk on butterbeer and they have a lot of fun, but then they get home and they realize, this is just a stick. I can't do anything with this. Why would I spend my money on this? What's wrong with me? So then they go onto eBay and they try to sell their wands for as much as they can get. The first interactive wand that I got, I found on eBay for $16. That's $40 less than they go for here in the parks. So before you even come to the parks, Look online to see if you can get a cheaper wand. If you decide not to get your wand online, the first Universal Studios store where you can get a wand is at the airport. Is at the airport. I didn't want to go to the airport for this video. So like I said, it's always a good idea to get your wand before you get to the parks, before you get to the gates. That's because the wands come in these big unwieldy boxes that don't fit in the lockers, barely fit into your bags, and they're just a mess to carry around. If you've already arrived at the parks or maybe you're staying at a hotel nearby, you can always check out the Universal Studios store here in CityWalk. There's no charge to get in and they have a wide variety of character ones to choose from. If you decide to get your character one from the Universal Studios store either here in CityWalk or at the airport, you can go ahead and drop off the box at your hotel room and just carry the wand with you when you come to the parks. Before you even get to the park, you want to decide what kind of interactive wand you want. Do you want a character wand, which is a replica of a character's wand from the movie, either you like the character or you just like the design, or do you want an Ollivander's wand? The character wands you can get at eight locations here around Orlando, but the Ollivander's wands you can only get at Ollivander's. If you're coming to the Universal Studios side first, the first stop you're going to make is here at the Universal Studios store. They have a wide selection of character ones, both interactive and non-interactive. And of course, there's a wand specialist to help you out. I'm going to stop for a moment here in front of Transformers to talk about the difference between a character wand and an Ollivander's wand. The character wands are essentially replicas from the movie. Like I talked about in my previous video, they're not as sturdy or as weighty as the ones that you can get from Noble Collection but they do definitely look the part, even though they're a little bit thicker and the tips are shaved off to make room for the interactive elements. The Ollivander's wand, on the other hand, are based on 13 different wand woods, each one having their own personality and significant dates. If you've done the wand quiz on Pottermore and you know what wood your wand is made out of, you may want to go to Ollivander's to make sure you're getting the right wand wood. The character wands come in interactive and non-interactive versions, but like I said in my previous video, if you're going to get a non-interactive character replica wand, you may as well get it straight from the Noble Collection. Since my previous video went up, I have learned that the non-interactive replica wands are the Noble Collection replicas. So they'll be the same quality that you can get directly from the Noble Collection for about $20 more. You can also find a smaller selection of character wands from Fantastic Beasts at the same places where you can find the other character wands. They will be in bright colored boxes instead of the normal Ollivander shades of brown. So as you're entering Diagon Alley, through the entrance next to Leicester Square tube station, of course you see Ollivanders right in front of you, but our next stop is going to be a little bit to the right. This one's by Grigorovich. It's closed right now uh, due to the limited capacity of the park but inside you'll usually find the same character wand selection that they have at the Universal Studios store. I'm not gonna go inside Ollivander's because they have limited capacity, but I have some footage that I recorded earlier. Well, half of Ollivander's is going to be the Ollivander's wood wands. They have signs posted on two places on the walls that show you the personality traits of each wand wood. There's a train. They also have wand experts that know significant dates associated with each wand wood. So if you want a wand to represent your birthday or anniversary or other date, just talk to one of the wand experts in Ollivander's and they'll be able to find one for you. The other half of Ollivander's wand shop is going to be your character wands, both interactive and non-interactive. And there are two ways inside of Ollivander's to find your perfect wand. If you're looking for a character wand, obviously look at the labels. 
Each of the boxes are labeled with the character's name right in the front so you can see it on the shelf. If the label is in gold foil, you're getting an interactive wand. But if it's in white, then you're just getting a normal wand. Unfortunately, the Ollivander wand boxes all have the same Ollivander's logo on the front. So just by looking at the boxes, you won't be able to tell which is which. But if you turn the box over and look at the barcode label on the bottom of the box, you'll be able to see the name of the wand wood of the one that's inside. Right now, due to the regulations, they're only letting a few people into Ollivanders at a time, and each group is going to be supervised by a wand expert. Unfortunately, due to the regulations, you're not allowed to touch the boxes at this time, but the wand experts know exactly where each different wand is, even without looking at the labels. So once you know which wand you want, just ask them and they'll be able to grab a wand off the shelf for you. Right here on the backside of Ollivanders, there is a show that reenacts the scene from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, where Harry first gets his wand. Curious. Very curious. If you're lucky, you'll be able to participate in the show, but it's closed right now due to the new regulations. That's where you can get your wands here on the Universal side. Let's go to the Islands of Adventure and see where you can pick up a wand there. Normally, when I'm visiting just the Harry Potter parks, for the full immersion, I'll take the Hogwarts Express from one park to the other and really sit there and enjoy the ride. But the wait for the Hogwarts Express was about 60 minutes right now. Um, so it's about half of that amount of time to just walk to the other park. So I'll go ahead and do that. While I'm in between parks, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why you want something to carry your wand around. When you purchase the wand, it comes in this big, huge wand box. It's about five times the width of the wand and about an inch or two longer than the wand because it has a thick plastic insert inside that keeps your wand stationary. That is not a box that you wanna be carrying around the park. It doesn't fit comfortably into most backpacks. And if you have a raincoat or a bag or other things that you're carrying around and you want to go on a ride that requires a locker, that wand box is not going to fit in the free lockers with the rest of your stuff. So instead, get something to carry your wand around with. Personally, I either use a wand holster such as this one, or if I'm carrying one of my smaller wands, I will just stick it in a small bag like this. Now, if you get one of the official Universal Studios Hogwarts robes in any of the house, those come complete with a wand pocket. The wand does sit a little bit loose in there, but it's definitely secure. If you're on a budget and you decide to get your robes or other costume items from Hot Topic, I've noticed that a lot of those, including the, the Hogwarts house robe hoodie, those all have wand pockets in them as well. But those wand pockets tend to be a little bit looser than the ones on the universal robes. So your wand may rattle around a little bit while you're wearing them. As you're entering Universal Islands of Adventure, the first store that you'll see and the first place where you can get a character wand is the Universal Islands of Adventure Trading Company. You will only be able to get the same selection of interactive and non-interactive character wands that you can get at the Universal Studios store, either in Universal Studios, in City Walk, or at the airport. So here we are in Hogsmeade in the Universal Islands of Adventure. As you can see right in front of us, there is an owl post. Just behind the owl post is Ollivander's. And then farther up the road, you can see a wand cart. The next stop on our journey is right here below Hogwarts Castle. We have a wand cart that you can see behind me. They have the same selection that you'll find at Grigorovich or at the Universal store. As you can see, a lot of the ones that are facing right now have the gold labels. But if you look through the character ones that they have, the remember the gold labels are interactive ones, the white labels are non-interactive ones. Well, the virus, you can take the first draft now if you like. We're only here about for a few more minutes. Happy birthday to you! Next stop is of course Ollivanders, where they have the same show that they have on the Diagon Alley side, reenacting that scene from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Hello. Hello there. The show is closed right now, so the wand shop itself is actually next door in the Owl Post. Here at the Owl Post, they do have character wands as well as the Ollivander wands, 
but they don't have the same printed posters that have the personality traits of the different woods. So you can talk to the wand expert to find a wood to match your personality, or if you already know which wood you're getting ahead of time, you can just come in and grab it. Instead of having pictures, they do have the wands displayed underneath the boxes. But remember, these are not the actual wands, these are just decorations. So they're a little bit more rundown and the color is a little bit different from the one that you have. And finally, we're outside of Filch's Emporium, just underneath the Hogwarts castle. And we'll talk a little bit about how the interactive wands actually work. A lot of people think that the interactive wands have some sort of electronic component but these are actually made the same way that the normal non-interactive ones are made. The only difference is here at the tip, they have an infrared retro reflector. And what that does is it reflects light directly back to its source. The next component of the interactive wand is actually in the displays themselves. Anytime you see a place where you can use the interactive wand, there are about three or four infrared cameras. Those send out infrared light that you can't see, but the cameras can, that reflect off the tip of your wand. Because the light is reflecting directly back towards the cameras, the tip of your wand shows up as a bright point of light in front of the cameras. So if the bright point of light moves in the same shape as the spell that you're casting, then it will perform the action. So if you're moving your wand and you can't get the hang of things at first, Look for the infrared reflectors. They're usually above or below the thing that will move and point your wand directly perpendicular to the cameras. These interactive wand stations are designed for children. So if you're too tall or if your wand movements are too big, they're not going to work. So keep your wand movements small. And if you need to, you can lower your wand and point them up at the cameras, but make sure that they're exactly perpendicular to the cameras when you're casting your spell. It's very, very important to keep the tip of your wand safe at all times and scratch free. However, if the wand does get scratched, you can take it to one of the Ollivander stores and get it repaired free of charge. The most fun you can have is just to wander around and see where other people are trying to perform spells or just find the medallions on the ground. Every interactive wand is also going to come with a map of Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. On this map, you'll see all the different places where you can cast spells. Each number on the map corresponds to an incantation and a wand movement around the edge. These wand movements and incantations will match medallions that you'll find on the ground. That's how you know you found the right place to cast your spell. So here in Diagon Alley, we can see that near the fountain, there are four different spells that you can perform. So we can have the fountain as well as the blacksmith shop. The blacksmith shop here is one of my favorite spells to cast. Here in Nocturne Alley, there is one spell that doesn't actually use the wand at all. Instead, you stand on the medallion, and then the skeleton on the screen will copy all the movements that you do. And that's everything you need to know about interactive ones here at Universal Studios. Is there anything that I missed? What's your favorite spell to cast? Who's your favorite character wand? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.